I'm Joe Maynard, and I'm a maker. How long have you been a maker? I've been a maker since February 6th. 2019. What are you making? Right now I'm making knives. I was making woodworking furniture. I was making, I was building furniture, woodworking stuff. Built a shop for that purpose and then got into knives. Kind of got the itch, kind of got hooked on it. So that's what I do now. What got you started in the knife making? What gave you that initial itch? That initial itch was a friend of mine inviting me over to the house and a couple days later, just made a knife just because there was nothing else to do for a couple of hours. And after seven hours of grinding on one knife, I realized I didn't think about anything else other than making a knife and being happy. So I ended up getting getting hooked on that part of it. And that's and when I make knives now, that's kind of where I, I go back to mentally. And it's kind of why I actually invite people over that don't make knives, because I get to see their reaction, kind of like looking in the mirror from when I first started. That's cool, that's cool. What's your uh, background before making furniture and making knives? I was in the Army for 20 years. I was a pilot, flew all over the world, and was a dive master. Made <clears throat> made a lot of uh, made a lot of friends in both communities, and then I started when I retired. I started doing contract work, government work, and now I'm making knives and making friends in this community as well. Cool, excellent. So, with your knife making, what do you think your greatest accomplishment is so far? What's the thing you're proudest of? Man, oh man. That's a good question, man. <laughs> Holy crap. That's a good question, because all these, like, fast forward, like all these things keep coming into my head, like, <clears throat> um, my son doing, just teaching my son to forge a knife is pretty cool. I, I'm not gonna lie, because there's certain things you grow old and you're like, yeah, I thought I'd do that, like changing oil in the car. But, um, whooping your ass in a mini knife challenge is probably my biggest, <laughs> I, I hear you. I honestly, I tell you, the biggest accomplishment for me with with these knives, and the thing that I'm most proud of, is that I haven't. Uh, how, how do I say this? I I haven't. I haven't. I don't think there's any way to reach the top. There's no way to 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 be the best and then you know get bored which uh, a lot of people do i, I get I, it happens to me if i get really good at something small and it's like okay now what but with this i get to i get to make knives i get to make a different knife as many times as i want and then having people here having family you know a kid and his dad here and actually make a knife and and have them carrying it around or seeing somebody on the street that recognizes me because I'm wearing my shirt and they have a knife that I made. That's kind of cool. I enjoy, I enjoy that part. Just making people happy. I can completely understand that. Who is your biggest inspiration in the knife making community? Or your biggest mentor? Ooh. It depends on the part of the knife. Because if if I'm talking about man, that's a that's where are you getting these questions from? <laughs> that's a good question. If I'm going honestly, if I'm going I'd say Dirk if I'm going with design. Because I got his South African accent in my head telling me design is 90% of the, the knife. <laughs> <laughs> you know that kind of thing and so I, I make sure that I get the design right before I start moving into it but if I'm talking if you're talking about 
etching, I, I would, I'd probably talk to Neil. If, if it's business, probably, probably talk to Zach. If it's, I don't know, if it's whether or not it looks okay, I just talk to my wife. <laughs> she's the one that sees everything I make. Well, you mentioned that you don't think you could ever achieve or want to achieve the greatest maker kind of scenario. Sure. What's your next goal? Oof. My next goal, I've got little, and it sounds stupid, but there's little things. I've got threaded, threaded uh, pommels because just getting the weld and that, you know, soldering down, I would say that's definitely one. Getting, oh, folders. Getting, getting a, a folder done other than a friction folder. Liner lock, just like a regular liner lock. You know, I'm trying to start with folders, I'm trying to start off with as few pieces as possible, just try to figure out which one is the next level of it, not trying to make the best, you know, most complex one to start. Uh, kind of like we did with going straight to slip joints. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even know what slip joint is. <laughs> I just learned what a backspacer is. <laughs> what's your favorite uh, steel to use and what's your favorite head material? Mm. Mm -hmm. My favorite s steel, if I'm, if I'm forging, would, would have to be a 1080. If, if I'm just trying to make something really pretty, it's probably a carbon shark tooth Damascus. Just, I love that pattern. I love the way that with the ladder, you know, it kind of stretches, but with the shark's tooth, it, everything goes one way and everything goes the other way. And I, just, I just like that look and I like the carbon because of the contrast you can get from it. What about the hand material? What's your favorite hand material? Mm -hmm. I would say handle material. I like using the ivory because you can, because it polishes well. But tell you the truth, a block of paper micarta is pretty close to perfect for a handle material in my eyes because you get you get some grain structure whether or not you want to or not just the way you buff it and but it, it polishes up well so it gets shiny it's 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 like you're not trying to make it perfect and fail it's like you you know that it's going to look exactly the way you want I think that's that's my favorite. But it's gotta be a block though. I like the blocks of it. You mentioned uh, doing some work with your son. Do you think he's gonna jump into this game too or? I'll tell you what, my my oldest, he's, he's followed me whether I wanted him to or not, he's followed my footsteps military-wise and, you know, with hobbies and stuff. And I got a call from him when he was in Iraq last year. And the only thing he said was, I can't wait to come home and make knives. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You can't trade that for anything. No, he actually came, he came home one day with a two-inch open sock uh, wrench, a uh, mechanics helicopter wrench. And he's like, yeah, I took this from work. I don't think they're gonna miss it. And we cut it in half and actually it's sitting over there and we're in the process of making a couple of daggers with them. And one's the socket or the open-ended and one's the socket end. And we're gonna just kind of make cross daggers in a box or something. Excellent, that's cool. That's something you always treasure. Yeah. If you just incriminate the sun on the video. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Ford, man. Although, American. I'm happy with that. I like that. That's a good answer. If there's anything you could ask a knife maker, new knife maker, or not ask, but inspire or 
advice to give a new knife maker, what would it be? Good question. I actually had the guy that wants to get into knives contact me out of the blue. And he goes, man, I'm following you. I'm, what? I'm like, you, you're lying because I'm a nobody. You're lying. Quit. All right, go ahead. Keep saying it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he says, hey, I really want to get in the knife game, but uh, what? And it, the, the question he asked me was brilliant. He said, uh, I don't make a lot of money. I'm just getting started. I don't want to go into debt. What, if I could, if I had to buy just one piece of equipment, what would I buy? And I remember him saying, I remember saying that to somebody, or asking somebody that. And everybody told me the same thing. Buy yourself a grinder, a good grinder that you can change the attachments on. Because when I started, I was using like wood belt, you know, grinders, disc center combos and routers, woodworking tools, but I told him to buy a, gr buy a grinder. Just get a two by 72 that you can change the arms out on, you can change grits, you can use it for the handles, you can use it for the steels, you can use it for any part of the knife you want. I thought that was kind of cool. That's a good question, that whole favorite material. Like, I remember I remember doing something, and it's like one of those questions that you would stick onto the end of a, an interview by somebody famous that interviews people, like that, that dude that interviews actors. Walter Cronkite. Right. Yeah, <laughs> they like the last question he would ask would be, what's your favorite handle material, and what's your favorite blade to use? That kind of thing, you know? There's that the actor is his favorite his famous last question is what's your favorite cuss word? <laughs> Who is it? Uh, he's the one that Will Ferrell always impersonates. George Bush? No, he, <laughs> it's, a, it's an act. It's a guy that interviews people, and the uh, something circle. He interviewed Al Pacino, and Al Pacino's sitting there and he's like, "All right, and finally, he's got like a beard and glasses. And finally, what's your favorite cuss word?" Al Pacino's like. Oh, Fuck. he's doing the, the uh, Actors Guild. Act, yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy, he interviews everybody. His, always, his, last, his last question is always, and uh, there's a guy on the radio on one of the Sirius XM channels, and he calls people in their home, and he calls people, and their last question is always, yeah, all right, last question. You know it's coming. What are you wearing? <laughs> and Toby Keith was, was in his garage or something working out one day. He's like, all right, Toby, last question. What are you wearing? He goes, um, I'm wearing sweatpants. I'm, I go commando, so you know my balls are just slapping my leg right now. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> uh, you know that's going on the video, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't care. You can piece it together and make it look like, you know, I said anything. <laughs> Put your own Franken sentence together.